happy Thanksgiving from our family to you. Today I'm doing some farm chores <laughs> because Thanksgiving is just another day here at the farm. We've got some snow coming in again. So I'm going to be buttoning up some things here around the farm. And then I'm also gonna give you a little Thanksgiving tour of our barn. Stay tuned for more excitement. So one of the things we've been doing with all of these bags, we have probably another 50 out front that I have to haul back here before the snow comes in. But one of the things that we've been doing with all those leaves is not only mulching our garden beds, but we're also using it as bedding in our sheep barn. And the reason for that is because I don't like using straw anymore because if I can't grow it on site, I don't really know what's in it. And a lot of times straw is contaminated with persistent herbicides. So dry leaves make a really great alternative bedding for sheep. So as we're getting all these bags, I'm just kind of piling them up here. Anything that's in plastic, I'm actually keeping in plastic because that's helping keep those ones dry so that I can use them in the sheep barn. But first I have to clean it out in here. So the great thing about using leaves is that we are able to then apply it to the garden in the spring as a mulch. And if it has some sheep manure in it, that'll give a little bit of extra fertility as well. I know you want to come in. I've got the sheep locked out into their pasture right now because otherwise they'll be all up in the barn while we try to clean it up. So here's our first load and you can see what it looks like after we've shoveled it out. So this actually has been mixed with a little bit of straw because our last load of bedding was straw. But the nice thing about putting the leaves in is you can see they get really, the sheep as they step and walk on them actually kind of compress them down. So we're gonna put this into the compost pile because it does have the straw in there. So in case we have any persistent herbicide, I'm gonna keep this separated into its own bin and we can age it for a couple years before we use this one because those persistent herbicides can really hang out for a while. And then meanwhile, after I get this all emptied out, I'll go ahead and just refill it with just leaves and that way we can just apply that directly to the field in the spring. I just use it as a mulch. I'm also over here checking on the dahlias that we overwintered. So we've gotten our first snow, which has kind of compacted our mulch layer down a little bit. So as you can see, we've put our tarp over because we have to keep those dahlia tubers dry. And we put this tarp over to make that happen. And now that we've gotten some compaction of this mulch layer, we can really see how thick it is. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit more mulch on this pile just to ensure we have overwintering success here. Also topping off their minerals. So sheep need basically free access to minerals, but it has to be specifically for sheep low in copper. So they just basically have free access to it. So whenever they need it, which also helps make uh, their manure have a better mineral content as well. It's looking nice and cozy in here, fluffy. I think we'll let them in, see if they like it. How excited are you in this moment to go see your clean house? Hi, go check it out. So fluffy in there. Now that we have the sheep barn taken care of, let's go take a look at our barn because after this, we're gonna transition it all over to Christmas stuff. We have a lot of crafts going in there right now. So I'm gonna show you some of those things that we work on using garden items. Our barn was actually originally a horse barn here and they did have horses here on the property. And uh, so when we bought it, there was actually a tree growing through it. The foundation was starting to rot out. Uh, there were no windows, no doors, no floors. There was still old manure in there, probably 50 year old manure and straw. And so the whole thing smelled and we moved it. It used to be over here on this side of the field where we have our cattle panel tunnel is where it used to be, which is great growing space because it's nice and sunny in the winter. And over here is where we moved the barn to. And here it is, this is our barn. I love this space so much. And one of my favorite parts of the barn is the doors. These doors were made out of reclaimed wood and they were made by a company called Whatman Barn Furniture. These were the only things that we bought for the barn that were new. Everything else we either 
got from architectural salvage or we went to the thrift store or the antique store. So for example, the windows are all salvaged, but the doors were very hard to find something that were going to fit because what we had to do was cut what used to be two of the horse barn stalls and combine them into one nice big open door. Because we have workshops and events in the space, I wanted to be able to open the whole thing and finding doors of this width was really hard and also really expensive. I do love that in the summertime, when it's nice, if we're having workshops, I can throw these doors open and we can still have a nice view of the field. We can go in and out, but in the winter for our wreath classes, for example, we can keep them closed and it helps hold the heat in somewhat. The barn is not insulated, so heat and cooling is always an issue, which is part of why we're putting in a workshop space in our new garage mudroom edition. And I am so excited to have that because Arranging flowers in the space is very challenging because it's hot most of the time. When it's 95 degrees outside, it's 100 degrees inside the barn because there's no insulation. And we also don't have energy back here. We don't have power running back here. So we can't even hook up an air conditioner if we wanted to. But let's go inside the barn. We get a lot of questions about the floors in this space. And these floors are actually reclaimed pine. Because they're pine, they have a lot of character. <laughs> okay, so this is what we've learned is pine has tons of character. What do I mean by character? Well, not only are there tons of knots and rough patches in it, but also whenever someone comes in here, I mentioned we have events. So we often have baby showers, bridal showers. We've had a few, couple weddings in here during COVID. And whenever com someone comes and walks in here, you can see they leave little heel marks all over the floor. So. We're totally okay with that. This is a barn. Part of the idea of making this a barn was that it was going to be functional and usable as a workshop space. So we are okay with character floors, but if you like the wide plank pine, just know that it does show a lot. Now, right now the barn is pretty fallish. We have it mostly decorated for the fall season. And we also still have some remnants of some projects we did over the summertime in here. This is why I love it because I can kind of get it dirty and not worry too much. If the barn gets dirty, it's really not a big deal because we're not living back here. But otherwise, the dried flowers can really be messy, particularly the yarrow. I mean, you can see what happens if I do this. Lots of little pieces fall down. Um, so it's not entirely practical. You can see they're all over the plate now. It's not entirely practical for an indoor space, but for an outdoor entertaining space, I love it. Um, if you don't mind sweeping regularly, dried stuff like this big yarrow cloud inside is also really doable. This is just held up with chicken wire. So it's actually gonna be really easy when we go to pull it out, which we'll be doing this week. Once we remove all this yarrow, we're gonna turn it into some teas and some tinctures now that it's dried. So once we remove it, we'll just do a big sweep and clean everything out all at once. On this side of the barn, this is kind of my favorite space. This is where a lot of things happen here in the barn because it's my countertop and my sink. Now the sink we get a lot of questions on, we hook it up with a hose. So actually on the back, this is not plumbed, but we can hook our hose up to it so that it's functional during the summertime and it drains just into a bucket that we can dump the water onto our plants. So it's really not formally plumbed and that way we don't have to worry about anything freezing in the wintertime. Yeah, because you do a lot of crafting in this space, the sink does regularly get dirty, but that's why I love having one that I don't have to worry too much about. This is never a perfect sink. You can see it's got dings and imperfections in here. And so if it gets dirty, it's not a big deal. And then I have lots of materials in here. I have my twine, which I use all the time. Some clippers, all different sizes of vases. I get asked a lot where I get my vases. Typically I find them at the thrift store. These ones I actually bought from a company called A Floral but most of these are just kind of gathered from the garden center and thrift stores. And over in this corner is one of my favorite things. This is my antique flower press. So this is actually used to be a book press and they would bind books in it. Once they glued them, they'd put them down in here and push this down and it would bind the books because it creates such nice downward pressure. It makes nice dried flowers, pressed flowers, so I have a whole stack of them over here that I need to do something with. And then over here we have some various dried things. And up here I have all of my herbal dried items. So these are all things that I save during the summer for mostly teas and medicinal purposes. We have some plantain leaves. We have some mullion, which is good for respiratory. We have mint, some blue salvia, yarrow, goldenrod, lavender, 
and anise hyssop and some bee balm. These are all really good for making teas and we can kind of mix and match them together. Hey, Pukachu. Um, Hi. There's something I want to tell you. What's that? Look, that. Oh, you have a blister. It's hurting. Okay, um, yeah, it's because we're wearing shoes and no socks. <laughs> um, that's a little blister, let me think. Do you want to have some plantain? Do I have some plantain? <laughs> Cora is not a paid actor, I promise. This just happened. Okay, I'm gonna grab the plantain. Plantain is really good for owies. Um, so I keep it around. Usually I use it fresh, and I just find a leaf and I chew it up and then I put it on owies, but it comes in handy a lot in the field, as you can see. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna chew this up. It's intense when it's dry. We'll wrap it. You are being so brave. Plantain is a weed. I use narrow leaf plantain usually when I'm doing first aid. Um, I also use the Ouch. yarrow. So if I have dried yarrow and we have a bleeding owie, then you can crush up the yarrow and apply it to the wound and it'll stop bleeding. We're going to wait for that owie to get better. And while we wait, take a look at this. These are my favorite windows that we got from the Architectural Salvage. They're just beautiful full-length windows so that even when I'm standing here at the sink, I can still look out the window. And these are um, tiles that were left over from our bathroom remodel project. We had one box left over, so I just put them down here. They're actually not even attached, but they do make a nice backdrop for photos. Over here we have a project we're working on. These are for Christmas decorations, and these are actually salt dough gingerbread stars that the girls helped me make. And then we just attach them to this branch. We do have the table all set for Thanksgiving and normally we would do holidays here in the barn, but because we're doing our remodel project, we don't have power or water here. And so that's definitely limiting, but we've decorated it just like we would for Thanksgiving. We've got pumpkins here. We'll actually be giving these to the sheep tomorrow. We have our dried hydrangea in a terracotta pot. And whenever I'm using dried flowers, I like to put candles into lanterns and then that way we don't have to worry about them being a fire hazard because we have a lot of dried Virginia creeper here and the dried hydrangea are definitely flammable. So putting the candles into the lanterns is helpful. Over here we have a couple other crafts. These are benches that my husband made that just hold a lot of stuff. So it's nice to just be able to tuck things away. I have some toys in here for the kids. Uh, because they'll play in here sometimes when I'm working. And Kaisa has this that she's working on. Tell us about it. Do you remember what it's made out of? Yeah, it's made out of wood, chicken wire, and flowers. Yeah, and what color did you decide you wanted to go with? Purple. Purple. Where are you going to put it? Maybe in my new room. And then this is the other one that I'm is for, made. yeah, that I made for Cora's wall. And we can always tuck more things in too after it dries, but I don't think it needs anything else. What do you think? Maybe a few other flowers, like a little bit of white. And over here, this is our latest Christmas decor. So we're actually getting ready to flip the whole barn into Christmas. This is our window that we did this week. And we just used, these are cut out stars from the inside of a tube of tomato paste, <laughs> which is actually gold on the inside. Interestingly, so really pretty on the inside. And then we have some dried alliums. These are giant alliums. And then we have these little ones, which are called Millennium, Allium Millenniums, these little smaller ones, which also look like little snowflakes. Um, we could spray paint them, I guess, but so that they're compostable still, we don't use a lot of spray paint or glitter. <laughs> but so this will be a project for next week to keep going with all the oranges. Yes, sweetie, how's it feeling? It's feeling good. It's feeling good now? Yeah. You want to take it off? Yeah. Okay. You can just peel it off. Here we have some more of the stars that we're gonna get ready to decorate with and our dried citrus. So the dried citrus we just dehydrated in the oven at around 175 degrees for about six to eight hours. And we just sliced them real thin. And I like doing different citrus. So we have orange and lime here. And you can see how they kind of catch the light differently. So really pretty, especially in window 
installations. So this is a fun project that we did. It's an advent calendar and it has dried flowers on one side and on the other side it says, we wish you a Merry Christmas. So you can just turn one over for each day and then the rest of the year it looks like a cute display of your dried flowers. So if you're big into drying flowers like I am and you're never sure what you're gonna do with the dried flowers afterward, this might be a fun idea. This is our fireplace mantle. So this is actually an alley find. Um, I was hoping it would be wood underneath, but when I stripped it all down, I found out it was actually just MDF board. So we just painted it white. We scavenged some more bricks from around the property and made the back just glued them onto, we just glued these onto a piece of plywood. Um, so you can see at the back it's just plywood and over here we've just glued the brick on. And this is a ventless propane fireplace. So it really heats the barn quite well. The barn is about 13 by 27 and you can see completely uninsulated. But this little unit heats the barn very, very well, and it's nice and toasty in wreath classes. It can almost get up to 80 degrees in here, even if it's freezing outside. We always have some dried wreaths going, and here is the back of the yarrow cloud. So when you're here on the back side, you can see I actually only did the yarrow cloud on one side, and that's because I was only photographing it from one side. Otherwise, we could have made it two sides. It just would have used twice as much yarrow. It was actually all plywood in here, when we first moved the barn, it was very dark and dingy and dirty. And so what we did is we took down the stall dividers, which became the table. So if you look closely at the table, it actually still has the original whitewash. And that's because we used the old stall dividers to make this table. I actually love this table. I would love to have it inside my house. Um, my husband has different feelings about how rustic it is. And we decided to go with these tall chairs in here because for workshops, it's really nice to be able to stand or sit while we are doing flower arranging or making wreaths. We painted all of this plywood with origami white by Sherwin-Williams. And then we actually put these little insulative panels. This is just foam insulation panels that we cut to fit all of these roof trusses. So because there are so many rafters in this barn, I wanted to keep the wood exposed, but I wanted the ceiling to be white because it was just plywood under there. So I hand sanded each of these beams down and then we actually just tacked up these insulative panels that I painted white. And that way we kind of get the illusion of having a white ceiling with wood beams in here. And now it's a space that I love and I love using it to share with all of you. So just wanted to take you all on a little tour of our barn and much love from the Blossom and Branch family to you all. We'll see you around here soon. Happy Thanksgiving.